Okay, so the last problem that I'm going to work out with you is another one that involves oxygen. So we start these the same way. We're trying to split up our reaction into those half reactions. So got to find the oxidation numbers. Here I'm going to start with oxygen. Isn't that negative 2? If you can't tell right here, that's a negative sign. So this total is going to add up to negative 1. And if I have 4 negative 2s, that's negative 8. And what plus negative 8 gets me negative 1? That's going to be positive 7. Over here, the chlorine's just a minus 1, plus 2, and then 0. So, good. We're on our way. Now, if I want to figure out what's being oxidized, then oxidation number should be going up. What went up? Ah, that's going to be our chlorine. Negative 1 to 0. So, I'm going to pull out all of that chlorine stuff for oxidation. And then MN was the one being reduced because its oxidation is being reduced. It's going down from 7 to 2. So let's separate that stuff out. Chlorine is pretty easy as long as you don't forget that little negative 1 charge. Turning into Cl2. And then our MN stuff, remember to bring that oxygen with it because even though it's not technically being reduced, it's attached to that manganese. It's not being oxidized either, so we don't have to separate them apart. So, step one, done. We have separated our elements that are being oxidized and reduced, and now we want to balance our elements, starting with these special elements that are being oxidized and reduced. So, I have two chlorines over here. I need to put a two up front here to get two chlorines. And then balancing our manganese, I actually, those are already balanced, just one on each side. Now, the oxygen part isn't balanced though, so that's our next step to balance our oxygens. And we're only going to have to do that in a reduction half reaction by adding H2O. This brings an oxygen over, helps us balance it, but I need more than one H2O because I have four O's over here. I'm going to need to bring four O's in the form of four waters over here. Now we got the oxygens on that side, but now we have some hydrogens that we need to balance out. So that's eight hydrogens over there. So I'm going to add eight H pluses over here to get those hydrogens balanced. Now all of my atoms should be balanced. Two chlorines on both sides, eight H's, one MN, and four O's. Now we move into balancing the charges by adding electrons. So let's see here. The first one is oxidation. So we're losing electrons. I'm going to be adding electrons on the product side. And the reactant side has a total charge of negative 2. So I have no charge here. So I need a negative 2 to come from these two electrons here. And then balancing my charge and reduction. Reduction, my electrons go on the reactant side. And so my total charge on my product side, the one I'm trying to match, is a positive 2. Waters don't have any charges on them. So it's just this positive 2 here for my total charge. So I want to get my reactant side, including these electrons, to add up to negative 2. Or sorry, positive 2. So right here we've got a negative 1 and 8 positive ones. So 8 positive and 1 negative is positive 7. And what do I need to add to positive 7 to turn it into positive 2? It's going to be a negative 5. So I need to have 5 of those little negative electrons in order to have this total side over here all add up to positive 2. You can double check me if you want. This one's a little bit weird, but we should double check. We have five negatives, eight positives, and then one more negative gives us positive two. So, whew, our charges are balanced. And our second to last step is to make sure that our electrons are equal before we smoosh all this stuff back together. And unfortunately, they're not equal. I got five electrons here and two electrons there. So... Can't turn 5 into 2 or 2 into 5, at least not equally, e easily. So they're both going to have to turn into 10. In order to turn this 2 electrons into 10, I'm going to have to multiply 
by 5, and I'm going to do that to all of the rest of this oxidation half reaction. In order to turn 5 into 10, we need to multiply it and everything else by 2. So I'm going to go through and do that real quick. And there they are. Everything, at least our electrons, are equal. Everything's been multiplied in those reactions. So as soon as those electrons are equal, they're ready to cancel out and go away. And we are ready to add up these two reactions with each other. So remember to keep everything that's on this reactant side in both reactions before my arrow in my overall reaction. And everything that's after the arrow over here on both reactions is going to come together into our product side. So let's get that there. And there we are. So this is our final answer for this final problem. These reactions with oxygen can get pretty crazy looking, but if you take it one step at a time, and remember, I know there's a lot of steps there, but really all we're doing is breaking it apart, balancing our elements, then our charges, and then putting them back together. And balancing our atoms has a couple of steps. Balancing our charges has a couple of steps, but when that's all that we're really doing. So do a couple of the practice problems. Um, if you can, on that last page, it's the last bit of our packet that we have to do. I'd really like to see you try this because I'm not going to be seeing you right away again. you got the weekend. Um, so look at this last page and do one problem, maybe two. Leave yourself one or two to do next week when I can help you and go over them and keep it fresh for the test. And really, if I were to choose one problem, the easiest problem to do, the one that I'm going to have to try without Mrs. Gunter. Which one of these do you think is going to be the easiest? Because looking at them, personally, even though it looks like it's the longest, question number three is going to be the easiest. Why? Because when we look at it, there's no oxygen. You remember how easy those reactions were when there's no oxygen? So if I were to try any of these on my own, it would be that one. And you don't have to worry about all of these states of matter symbols, all these aqueous and solid things. Those don't have anything to do with this redox stuff that we're doing here. It is just to give you a little more information. So if you're going to try anything, try number three. It's going to turn out to be two, one, well, I guess we don't need the one. Um, so really all we should need, this is going to be the final answer, the overall equation when you get to it. 2, 1, 1, 2. Um, so that way maybe you can check your work. For those of you who are uh, a little bit, you know, off and not liking this process, come in. Let me help you with it because it's really not as complicated. There's a lot of little steps, but if we take each step one at a time, they're easy. We just need to make sure that we know how to do each step and when to do each step. So signing off from here. Good luck this weekend. Let me know what I can do to help you out.